Welcome back. This is episode two of the ACT Next Navigator podcast. I'm Adam Burke. Today we're talking about a video game that measures collaboration. ACT Next researchers conducted a study with this game in the Iowa City area in May 2019. Two people play a game called Crisis in Space or CPSX and they have to communicate to solve some puzzles and save a spaceship. It's a little like Apollo 13. We're going in depth about the game with the research team of Praveen Chopad and Dave Edwards in Navigator Episode 3, so stay tuned for that. Later, we'll do a follow-up when they've gone through some of the data and analyzed the results, so stay tuned for both of those episodes. This is an exciting project with real-world applications for measuring collaboration and social and emotional learning skills, or SEL. First, let's find out about the collaboration within ACT to make this project happen. I spoke with Lou Montgomery. Lou works in the Center for Equity and Learning at ACT. Uh, my name is Lou Montgomery. I'm the Director of Community Engagement for the Center for Equity and Learning. I asked Lou about some of the challenges of arranging the field study in the Iowa City area. The ACT Next team was looking to obviously identify the project, but they also needed individuals to participate in the project. They reached out to me and said, hey, uh, Lou, is there an opportunity for for you to help us locate students? Um, I was like, okay, eight, ten students. Um, and I approached the question. I said, well, that, that shouldn't be a problem. I know enough local organizations that can get this eight to ten students. And they said, no, 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 we need a hundred. Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Here's ACT Next data scientist, Dave Edwards. First things first is that Lou is fantastic and he's really a go-getter. And so my first goal was 50. And in our first conversation with him, I said, he said, how many do you think you need? And I said, well, maybe like 50. Because last summer we did it with the interns and I think we had 33. Um, we had 25 interns and then we, I guess we had to recruit nine ACT staff. And so we, I think we had 34 people total in okay. that data set. And so um, I knew that I wanted to have a similar size but a little bigger and so I was like well let's do 50 and Saad chimes in he's like no let's do 100. My eyes lit up like a Christmas tree when they said 100 folks but we were successful we were able to find the 100 students um, we reached out to uh, individuals in and around the Iowa City community uh, we reached out to uh, City High West High School um, we also reached out into Cedar Rapids into uh, Jefferson, uh, Taft Elementary School, Northeast Junior High School. Um, it really gave us an opportunity to really reach reach down into getting a very diverse population. So we have students who are academically very high level, mm -hmm. but we also have students who are who are around that three point range as well. It was a little bit of arm twisting because we we approached it towards the end of the school year, and as you can imagine at the end of the school year, it's constant chaos. <laughs> so you start getting into that April and May time frame. you got graduations, you got proms and everything else going on. So really the timing of it uh, was a bit challenging. So I had to call in a few favors here and there, uh, but we were successful, you know, and, and uh, our partnership with ACT Next um, is one that we feel real proud about. And for us, it was a great opportunity for us to take two departments, merge them together with the common interest, and that's obviously getting the, the information and the data that's needed. Um, so we feel real good about that. That's something that we were positive about, and, and uh, it's nothing nothing like working with uh, Dave um, as well as uh, Praveen and, and the whole staff over there. So we're, we're, we're happy about it. I spoke with Praveen Chopaid by Skype. He's connected to us today from Michigan, where he's working for the month. He's usually one cubicle over from me in Iowa City. Hi, uh, I'm Praveen Chopade. I'm a research scientist too with artificial intelligence and machine learning team at ACT Next, ACT INC. I have specializations in machine learning, 
and I am working on this collaborative problem solving project since last two years. In this project, we use a non usu in vivo approach to measure collaborative problem solving and social emotional learning skill using AI and machine learning. We use CPS, a space exploration video game called Crisis in a Space that involves a two-player jigsaw task composed of a series of puzzles. In the game, two players, either an astronaut or an engineer are connected by a video and audio Skype call in separate room. Participants alternate roles and must communicate and cooperate to deal with potential dangers in outer space and complete the mission. Players decode encrypted messages, avoid asteroid impacts and put exploratory satellites in orbits around Mars. Each game lasts about 40 minutes and breaks are included. Following the space mission, players will be asked to complete a survey about the experience. Specifically, we focus on digital collaborative environments where behaviors are indicative of CPS skills and which can be captured in multiple modalities including video, audio and eye tracking recordings and analyze using machine learning techniques. We are using computational framework for evidence extraction and accumulation and performing analysis on data obtained from pilot study. Specifically, this work focuses on implementing various machine learning models for identifying teamwork skills uh, during the play of a collaborative game, Crisis in a Space. Why was it so important to use actual students uh, in junior high and high school? And why did you need a hundred of them? Specifically, uh, in the summer of uh, 2018, when we did the first pilot for summer intern, they were mostly the master students from different age groups. But if you see in the ACT, we develop different educational and workflow solution for these high school and middle school uh, students. So our objective was uh, to test this game or develop this game for the population or for the age group, which range fits for the middle and high school. So we uh, we just want to know if we have certain models, uh, if we make some changes, and if we want to implement this for this middle school and high school, how will it will go? So if we have, say, 20 students, that will not enough. We want to come up with uh, some of the research uh, analysis or research results. So we need uh, more uh, students, 100 students, in order to get more accurate information in terms of the different uh, demographic, different uh, diverse group, uh, and that will be a good population in terms of making some research funding or if you want to scale this project to large population. So these are with this all objective, we thought of having more students so that the specific models will be more accurate in terms of skill measurement as well as going for the validity of our research. How many research papers do you think you can get out of this study? This is a very good question. So basically we want to take uh, this research to the uh, educational community and present uh, in good conferences. That is our objective. Second is also we want to uh, publish this in a peer-reviewed journal so that uh, it will go to the more uh, scholar uh, network and they will also provide their uh, comments, some recommendations as every research evolves uh, based on the inputs from the educational research community. So we are considering uh, two conference uh, presentations, publications and two journal publications in peer-reviewed high-quality journals. 
Now at ACT, we call it connected work. It is also known as remote work. A growing sector of the workforce is connected, and connected work is directly related to this project. How do you collaborate by digital connection? Like our team is is spread out. Like uh, Saad is in the East Coast time zone. Like Alejandro's in Mountain Time. Um, Brian is in the UK. You know, and so like there's definitely a lot of remote collaboration work there. Um, sometimes I think some of the tools could be better. You know, like if we have some document we need to share or whatever. Like email is always being used, but it's not always great because like now I have different versions yes. of everything. So you know. Um, coming up with different methods of doing collaboration is really key i think um but i mean there's always phone and you know phone is fantastic um it, it almost blows my mind to think like what was things like without like before phone like before radio um like i can't even imagine it sometimes yeah. um and so yeah so from that perspective you know like moving forward into like the future world of collaboration i mean i think it's really tough it's um you know, from an economics perspective, right? Like I gain a lot by not having to have a person on staff, like on site, you know, like this gig economy kind of thing. So like I'll hire you to do like 20 hours worth of work or something. So I think that that is like really huge. I think there's always going to be issues with quality there. I think there's always going to be issues with, um, you know, does this person have a five-star rating or whatever? Like, are they really going to deliver the thing they promise? So I think that's always something that's a challenge. And so, you know, being, um, like being in direct contact with them is huge. Um, as far as like collaborating um, routinely with the same people, you know, like so you said you had a Skype with Praveen. So one thing I found really interesting is the ways that different people do that remote collaboration. So for me, I'm very much a person where it's like, you know, I know you. I see you in the office all the time. Like, I don't need to turn on the video. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do video chat. Mm -hmm. um, like, I don't need to see you. Uh, but maybe you want to see me, you know, but maybe I don't want to be seen because I'm like chomping on a granola bar or something. <laughs> and so there's definitely a lot of things where sometimes people are a little bit more distracted or different people collaborate in different ways. So like some people like they just need to be emailed every day. Some people, they want to do a call like almost every day or every other day. Some people really want the video. Some people don't. And so I think one of the big things there, and this is, I think, something that you can learn from playing collaborative problem solving game crisis in space is that really to try to meet your partner where they are like do what they need done and not necessarily what you think needs done um especially when that person is your boss you know like you you have to meet their requirements and not just only focus on yourself which i think is something that could be said about a lot going on now um but yeah i mean i think that we're getting higher and higher abilities to be able to do video conferencing, do audio conferencing, share screens with each other, like share documents back and forth with one another. And so I think collaboration is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, all of the best ideas these days are cross-disciplinary ideas. They're places where like a biologist and a data scientist come together, like a, a physicist and a data scientist come together. Like everybody comes together with a data scientist to make something. And the one thing I'll say about data scientists is that they don't know anything about anything, but they do know like how to fit a model to some data set and so it's like I don't know what the process is of biology but I do know that if we have all this data we could find these correlations right and so 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 much of it is cross disciplinary like there's no way that a person who knows this much about microbiology can also know this much about robotics or whatever so there's so many of these cross disciplinary teams where you have to figure out how to speak the other person's language always this constant pressure on, on clarity yes yeah. on clarity of communication communication, yeah. making sure that when I say something, that's the same thing as what you mean yeah. when you say something and that we develop a common language for what we're doing. And these are all these kinds of things, these processes that we are explicitly trying to elicit in our collaborative problem solving game. And so this is where I think having it fused together with some kind of like mindfulness reflecting activities in a classroom is, would be just an invaluable experience to understand that like, even though I'm playing this game, I'm still doing all the same things I would otherwise need to do in a non-game collaboration. Like I need to set clear expectations. I need to make sure that you know what you're trying to do. I need to make sure that you know what you're trying to deliver. I need somebody in the group to take some kind of leadership role. Um, you know, and so there's just a lot of these things in the larger world of collaboration that I think are directly relevant to our game. These three people, Lou, Dave, and Praveen, are a diverse group. I asked them 
about their backgrounds and working together. And now tell me about you, Praveen, a little bit. Um, where did you grow up? And when you were 10 years old, did you want to be a computer scientist? Yeah, this is a very interesting question, <laughs> Adam. So I came with a, I mean, a very small uh, uh, village uh, with a around 500 population in India. Uh, there is a state, Maharashtra state, and uh, again, the inside uh, in Maharashtra state, there is a small city, I born Chinsoli Buzruk, which is uh, in uh, Anyangao. When I born that time, we don't have electricity for a few years. So for uh, initial few years, I studied uh, with the lamps, Mm-hmm. And later, uh, I made in terms of based on my uh, educational aspirations and uh, with different skills, I was good in science and math. I made a plan uh, go for higher education for engineering. So I always try to uh, do uh, well in my studies with a lot of hard work and passion. Mm-hmm. And I succeeded in terms of I got um, made assistance. I went from a small town to uh, another town for another school and then for my engineering uh, district, government engineering college and then for masters to uh, another city, College of Engineering in Pune and then uh, for uh, achieving higher education, I received opportunity to complete, pursue my doctoral degree in North Carolina and State University in Greensboro. So in December 2013, I completed my PhD in computational science and engineering. And this, all this uh, journey gives me uh, inspiration in terms of how, what is the importance of education, which helped me to uh, succeed uh, myself as well as to help others because the education is helping for me to work for different projects, different assignments. And which are part of the, uh, which are the solutions which we are developing are applicable to the broader community. So I came with to ACT, ACT Next with broader vision to apply my technical scientific skill and uh, de- uh, develop different solutions which will be applicable to the large community. Yeah. Uh, our my background was uh, mi- uh, middle school. My uh, father uh, was a primary teacher. Uh, we were ha- having a limited uh, financial uh, uh, resources. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when we grew up in a small uh, mm-hmm. no, home, uh, so that time only means uh, even as I said earlier, electricity. Even at some areas there will electricity, but due to some financial uh, thing, initially we were not having electricity. Yeah. And later, when I actually went for my uh, master's education, undergraduate, then I started uh, getting the internet. So till that time, uh, I was uh, really uh, not uh, aware. But I also made one thing like uh, when I grow up and when I uh, go with the, this knowledge, I will give you back to the community so that I, I uh, now uh, they will not suffer with the same problem. So mm-hmm. at least I have I want to actually take this education and knowledge to my same uh, community or uh, community around the world. Those who are in the same uh, those who are actually growing in the same environment, so that they should not face the same problem and they should get all the opportunity equal opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, with and uh, they should everyone should grow uh, with uh, good education and uh, that will help them to prosper in their own career as well as uh, that will also help them to uh, grow or uh, for in a community that's my also one of the vision yeah. as I grow and when's the last time you were home yeah, uh, in uh, December of uh, 2018, okay. um, my father is now 79 years and he was not well. So hmm. I made a plan last time, uh, last December. I went for uh, two weeks mm-hmm. uh, to meet them. Good. What are they, how do you explain what you do to your home and friends? 
yeah i started uh, in general in terms of how we uh, have the educational environment uh, previously like we used to have the everything on the board like a uh, chalk mm-hmm. and the blackboard and uh, we have to sit on the ground and things need to explain means uh, our uh, teacher used to explain uh, some of the concept like uh, if there is a science uh, if there is a uh, some math so everything was on the board but we were not aware what is exactly uh, if we have to do some of the scientific thing we have to just imagine what teacher was telling but now i am telling them we have developed this artificial intelligence machine learning is helping to develop some of the prototypes so if we have to teach the same thing concept very easily any engineering or any uh, scientific concept we can using the ai machine learning we can develop a game or simulations or we can at the same time use some of the uh, internet a video tutorial a very sophisticated video tutorial to show them that this is the concept so i tell them in terms of like uh, these are this how the education is changing we are developing some of these educational measurement to measure some of these skills like uh, specifically math science uh, writing these are uh, these are the uh, some of the skills but at the same time uh, we have another skill this collaborative problem solving uh, uh, creative thinking so how we can really uh, these skills are useful and how this will also help for individual as well as as a team to uh, develop so we are developing these uh, tools to play the game and this tool will also help uh the students to measure uh, their collaborative problem solving and social emotional learning skill so i take the use of the uh, concept from the computer science development in the technology how the world is changing to tell them that as a research scientist how i play a role of uh, making the uh, visionary plan in terms of uh, designing some of the concepts uh having a uh, some uh, discussion with our talented team member and uh, making the efforts to implement it uh, and then there are various team members they try to productize it and then that products come from our company i was reading about you And you, oh. do you still do a training camp <laughs> in Cedar Rapids for football? My, uh, my background is um, I was a student athlete at the University of Iowa. Um, I, I played in the 1990 Rose Bowl. Um, I was a four-year starter uh, in the, as a running back. Um, I graduated from the University of Iowa in 1992 with a degree in communication studies. Um, I played a, uh, very briefly in the NFL uh, with the Detroit Lions, very, very briefly. Um, and uh, I, I've taken my athletic career and the things that I've learned athletically and tried and try to apply them to life skills. Um, hard work, dedication, commitment, um, preparation, um, utilizing the networks that I've had over the course of 28, 27 plus years of, of, of being in and around the community and really leveraging that into uh, the work that I do here at ACT. If you think about it holistically, you got 22 players on a football field, okay, 11 on each side. And the importance of being able to collaborate, and I'll just take it from an offensive perspective, okay. Um, you know, you have a quarterback, the center, offensive line, def- uh, running backs and, and receivers. And uh, the importance of being able to collaborate and communicate in a millisecond to make decisions that will put, position you in the best opportunity to advance the football um, down the field and ultimately across the goal line to for a score uh, is a concept that, that really seems relatively elementary in its concept, but in peeling back the onion a bit, it's very complex because you have a defense that also 
has a responsibility to stop the advancement of that football down the field and to also disrupt your ability to effectively communicate so that you can advance the football. So if you take those two elementary kind of thoughts and you apply them in a workforce environment, what you get is collaboration amongst team members that say our CEO group, who is trying to advance the student's opportunity to an equal playing field for folks who, who sometimes are disadvantaged. And along the way, you have these bumps in the road and you have this disruption um, where you're having to try to advance a scenario or to help a student and you run into these roadblocks. So I think as we think about collaborative in a, in a, in a athletic sense and apply it to a practical sense in a workforce, there's a lot of similarities. What I feel, at least personally for me, is how do you navigate this playing field? How do you apply the lessons that I've learned from uh, being a, a Big Ten athlete and as well as an, as well as an NFL pro athlete to the workforce? And um, I've had to learn some difficult lessons along the way, but the, I found that there's a lot of similarity. That millisecond of decision. Um, when the quarterback stands up to the line, he calls the play in the huddle, and that quarterback comes up to the line, and then he changes that play at the line of scrimmage, and you have 100,000 people screaming, and you simply can't communicate. Um, how, do you, how do you still execute that play in a millisecond and a decision-making scenario that will still help you advance that football. And I think in the workplace, sometimes that happens too, where we have to make split decisions in a, in a millisecond or very timely decisions. That quarterback sometimes will have to give a hand signal when he understands that his teammates aren't communicating. Uh, sometimes he'll pat his face mask. Sometimes he'll pat his, his thigh. Sometimes he'll, he'll give a hand signal. So that's why that's where it goes back to those nonverbal communication thing skills that I talked about earlier is when we think about collaborative and we think about our remote employees and we think about the person that's sitting next to our table, one of the things that I value probably very highly in my life is being able to pick up and sense a person's effectiveness in grasping the information. You know, are they getting it? Are they not getting it? There's a lot of follow-up questions and a lot of things that I try to gauge from a person uh, to make sure that they're concrete on, on you know, maybe my definition or my explanation or, or what I'm sharing. Sometimes the, the roadblocks that are in our way, we have to navigate through offensively. How do we communicate to still advance the football down the field for, as an organization to reach our strategic objectives? And then also being able to filter out all the distractions and the noises that are sometimes around us uh, and still advance the football. So that there, there are the parallels that I see just on a high level amongst those two areas. That's good. So one of the things, uh, important point I want to also uh, speak about our uh, AIML machine learning and ACT Next team. Mm -hmm. Starting from our director, uh, AML machine learning director, Dr. Saad Khan, uh, he really played important role of his uh, leadership and executing a plan, taking the specific uh, uh, required decision to move forward, uh, as well as our team members, David Edwards, lead data scientist. Uh, he is uh, also the instrumental part. He al always try to see our suggestions for implementations. Then uh, Alejandro, uh, who is helping us for uh, the skill tagging and cluster development uh, with uh, Dr. Brian Maddox, our consultant mm -hmm. from East Angela University. Uh, he also is the director of microanalytics at United Kingdom. Both they came, uh, Alejandro and Brian Maddox, during the pilot study to Iowa City to help participate in our two schools. So their participation, their encouragement, as well as the Scott Poo. He also, he's a data scientist too from ACT, next AML team also help, as well as uh, communications uh, 
team uh, adam brook uh, he also made his participation uh, in playing the game giving the suggestion as well as uh, taking this uh, game making the contact with the media for the press release and uh, that also gives the wide coverage due to his uh, connection and his expertise during the plan and andrew cantony uh, from communication team matt leundelas uh, who helps to design different designs for this uh, cps x game that also help us uh, they played also important role in success of this game as well as our project uh, manager toby drake who mm-hmm. also helped to coordinate a uh, number of activities from the processing document to the legal and a lot of other paperwork debra glass most importantly two persons they supported senior director uh, strategy implementation and operation dr ida wu who also try to see that everything uh, we need is there and most important link the our visionary leadership dr alina hon devier senior vice president sct next she actually also you want to see she is really uh, busy but she always asking us how things are going is everything is okay do you need support that was the encouragement and her support really helped us not only this but she with uh, other leadership team all uh, they are helping us to take this uh, project to the scalable level at the same time most importantly our uh, company's uh, visionary uh, leader martin rudra ceo he also um, uh, attended our um, uh, cpsx presentation uh, when we presented in the act uh, research presentation he also came up with uh, some important uh, suggestion and he is also the a source of inspirations for uh, this project so overall starting uh, each member of the act next team and act act equity and this shows uh, the really uh, is not the work of only i am doing or my, some of act uh, aiml team member doing no this whole success is a story of participation from all the members of the team of the, as well as the organization as well as the support from the community outside so this is a really very uh, good environment which is required for the success of any project that's excellent that's a good way to end it and thank you for naming all those people that's great well that's our show in episode number 3 our next podcast we'll go in depth with some of the concepts we touched on today specifically the game crisis in space or cpsx collaborative problem solving thank you for listening to act next navigator <laughs>